need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And Jesus had been baptized just as he came up from the water. Suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, the whom I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. First of all, I'm not going to be using the lectionary reading today, so that's why we're talking about baptism. And I want to thank God for the opportunity to be here and for you allowing me to be here. Uh, for me, it is always a privilege to bring the message that I pray will be God's message. As I read the script scriptures uh, that were suggested for this particular Sunday of celebrating the gifts of women, I thought to myself, what can I say that will help us understand what God is trying to say to us? After all, the scripture is about Jesus. It's not about a woman, a woman or women. So I had to think about it all during the week. I kept thinking of all the women in my life that had a part in getting me to where I am today. God, God allowed women like my mother, my four tias, my teachers in Sunday school and public school, my sisters and all my friends I have made along my faith journey of faith. And also the new friends that I have uh, come to know at seminary, both students and professors as well as staff. All these people helped to shape my life. I was raised with my sisters and in a church with my theas and female sponsors. In public school, most of the people that taught, my, taught me were women. All these women had something I needed to learn about God and how God uses women to model behavior that is pleasing to God. Now, not everything I learned was good, but we can also learn how not to be uh, through people in our lives. So what does that have to do with our scripture passage? Well, Jesus was special. We all know that. But think how special John was, that he was given the privilege to baptize Jesus. John was cousin to Jesus, so he was family. Family is what we who call ourselves Christians are. Now granted, families do not always agree, and that is a good thing. Because think how boring it would be if we all thought the same thing. Having different points of view helps us to see different sides of an issue and discover that maybe we need to see that other point. We Christians have to remember that we have been chosen by God, as Colossians 3 tells us, to be clothed with compassion, with kindness, with humility, meekness, and patience. That scripture tells us that we, how we are to treat each other as the ones chosen by God. But how often do we hear of differences of opinion or arguments or happenings where those traits are not demonstrated? It is hard to live up to those attributes, but with God nothing is impossible. And like the people whom John baptized, we too are to receive new clothes because we become a new creation when we are baptized. That was the practice in John's time, to take off the old clothes and receive new ones after being baptized. Did Jesus need new clothes? Wasn't Jesus perfect? I like to believe that he was, but he was also human. And I believe Jesus wanted and needed to set an example for his followers that even he needed to be baptized by John to fulfill God's purpose. According to Christian historian John Dominic Crossan, the Baptist, baptism of Jesus was an acute embarrassment for the early church because it was so ordinary. The Messiah was placing himself under the tutelage of a troublemaker like John the Baptist. The leaders also questioned whether Jesus, was, who was perfect, needed the baptism of repentance. 
Why did God the Father choose such a sordid moment to part the clouds and call his son beloved, even though his ministry had not even begun? The people of that time were no different than we are today. What do we find impossible to believe about this particular moment in our lives? Can it be that God appears to us in such familiar ways that we may miss it, or that our baptism binds us to all humanity in the flesh, not in theory, and therefore we are family and are responsible for each other in ways that we often fail to respond or honor? Or is it hard to believe that God has chosen us, not because we do anything to deserve it, but because God insists on blessing us with God's approval. John did not feel worthy to baptize Jesus, but Jesus made John realize that God needed John to do this. Why? I believe it is because God has a purpose for each one of us, no matter how unworthy we may feel. Do you think I feel worthy being up here speaking to you this morning? I do it because I believe God is using me to bring hope and good news wherever I go or wherever I am. God is using even me, an older Mexican-American woman, to speak God's truth of hope. My clothes as a Christian do not always feel comfortable when I behave improperly, and that is when I realize I have to ask for forgiveness so the clothes become a little easier to wear. I don't usually share this about my faith journey with too many people because it may sound a little far-fetched. But I have heard God's voice before. It was a voice that did not scare me, but a voice I knew. Soft, gentle, and loving. I know it was God because I was alone in the car. And I didn't have the radio on. Uh, and at the age of 18, I heard God say to me that I could not do what someone else wanted me to do. And can you believe I actually listened? <laughs> the other times God spoke to me, it was through people whom God knew I respected and would listen to. God does not have to use others. But isn't it easier to listen to people than to say that God told me? I say this because today, we, if we hear someone say, God told me to do it, we think those people are, people are a little more than odd, especially if it is a bad thing they have done. Some people today do not believe God speaks to us, or that miracles still happen, at least not like they did in the past. I believe that God speak to us, speaks to us each and every day. In the new day that God gives us each time we wake up, the beauty of nature all around us, the beauty of relationships, the beauty that's created by poets or writers, songwriters or filmmakers, whom God uses to open our minds to the different ways of learning about God and the world God has given us. God speaks to us in endless ways, and I have seen God speak through children most of all. Children in their innocence do not know how to hate or how to mistreat others. Those are learned behaviors. Someone has to teach them that. And sometimes it is taught without realizing it. Children watch and imitate us adults. I don't have any children of my own, but have been around them all my life. Some of the things they say and do are some of the most profound things I have witnessed. I tell my friends at the seminary that do have children that I need to be around their children to see God, and I am more aware of what I say and how I behave because I do not want any child to say that I said or did anything appropriate in their presence. So parents and all adults, be aware that you are always being watched. In preparation for baptism, we the church have classes for those who seek baptism or confirmation. Some people think that is the end of their journey. 
when in fact it is only the beginning. Roger Nishioka, a notable Christian educator in our denomination, related a story of a young man who stopped attending church right after he was baptized. He and his family stopped attending because his parents thought that was all he needed was to be baptized. And the question his mother asked when the minister visited them is, isn't he done? I believe many church folks may think that all we have to do is to be baptized and we're done. Well, that is only the beginning. Jesus did not begin his ministry until after he was baptized. According to the Gospel of Matthew, it is his commissioning service to begin public ministry for which he was created and for which, to which he was called. His baptism named his identity and it is crucial. Our baptism also names our identity and it grows and deepens as we go about doing ministry in God's name. Ministry is many things and sometimes the simplest of actions towards others. It does not have to be big. I believe we need to remind each other that if we have been baptized, we have been set aside, are chosen by God to bring good news to others. More and more congregations are using the title of confirmation and commissioning to indicate that baptism is an important marker in our faith journey that sends us out to a new form of ministry and a new way of being faithful. Baptism and confirmation is about our continuing to grow in our understanding of what God is calling us to do as we live out our identity as children of God. Those of us who have been in the church most of our lives may need to be reminded that at any or all the baptisms that we participate in so that we never forget our identity is not finished, but still growing and developing, and does not end until our life is over. Because we never know who may be around us that needs to hear the word of hope in the good news of Jesus. God gives us a choice. No matter how often God shows up in our lives, we can choose to ignore God. We can choose to hate ourselves, even though God calls us beloved. No matter how often we affirm our vow to seek and serve Christ in all persons, we can choose to walk away. We always have a choice to forget our baptism and our new clothes. No one said this life would be easy. It may seem easy for us in this country, but not for those of other faiths and in other places. People are still being paid for what they believe. I believe the challenge is to look again, to look harder, to see with fresh eyes, with God's eyes, and cling to the possibility of surprise. Baptism invites us to go into deeper waters of faith where we learn that God's grace has no boundaries. God wants us to go beyond the boundaries that humans have created. I believe women in the Presbyterian Church are great examples of how to do that. They have been an example of boundary crossers for as long as I can remember. Through the PW Birthday Offering and other ministries, Presbyterian women have helped many people change their lives and the lives of their children. They have crossed boundaries and God has blessed their ministries. The women in this congregation are also examples of this. At the anniversary celebration the other day, I heard stories from folks who were here because they had heard a word of hope and received the love that crossed boundaries in different ways. It affirmed what I believe about small churches. They are important to the greater church because in them are people of faith and hope who care about others and who continually cross boundaries because they believe in the God of grace that has crossed boundaries throughout history. The women I mentioned at the beginning are the people who were and continue to be examples of boundary crossers for me. 
The stories of some of the women of this congregation are wonderful and need to be remembered so others may follow their example. I strongly believe women are special instruments of God that God uses, probably because I am one. <laughs> but seriously, women need to be heard because you may hear something you might not otherwise have heard and because Jesus crossed many boundaries when he dealt with women. Jesus lived into his identity by crossing boundaries. Our baptism is our identity and our journey continues to bring new and different boundaries to cross each and every day. How we cross them makes a difference in us as well as in those whose boundaries are crossed. Let us remember that it is God's grace that gives us the courage to cross those boundaries. And women, women do it in ways that some would not think to bring hope of good news to others. God uses women, but not just women. God uses all of us to bring hope to others. And we can choose whether we want to do that or not. All leaders, and especially women, need to remember that we are role models for those who come after us, the next generations of women. We can serve God as a woman, as a mother, a sister, an aunt, a daughter, a grandmother, and as professionals. And remember that as we serve, we have been chosen by God and have chosen to cross boundaries because Jesus crossed them for us. I pray that we cross the boundaries in the most positive and loving ways so others may see God reflected in each one of us. May it be so.